Today, the relationship between the scientific community and the public has never been more crucial. Changes in one sector can send ripples through the other. Unfortunately, this relationship is not always equitable. Excluded groups, sometimes referred to as underserved, underprivileged, or marginalized, are often unable to access scientific information or enjoy the benefits of scientific developments. This results in a loss of opportunities for both the excluded groups and the scientific community alike. To understand the exclusion of certain groups in the scientific discussion, we have to look deeper into the history of inequality and science communication. Inequality is a large-scale and complex issue that touches every society in the world. Its roots lie in virtually every aspect of culture and society as a whole. However, the seed of exclusion in the scientific discussion was planted at the dawn of modern science. Natural philosophy, the precursor to modern science, developed in 18th century Europe. It embodied enlightenment ideals such as the concept that rational and empirical thought leads to absolute truth. Blind to possible flaws in their rationale or empirical measurements, scientists' overconfidence in their experimental results were used by people in power to justify immoral, destructive, and violent actions. These actions even helped create future excluded groups in the process. This sowed multi-generational distrust between parts of the public and the scientific community, as well as an unequal distribution of power and resources that is reflected in society as a whole today. So how do we fix this? Falling Walls Engage believes that changing the culture of science starts with science engagement. That means creating a wide variety of interactions between the public and the scientific community to help foster a more inclusive and mutually beneficial relationship. These five programs from around the world have important lessons to share. Each employs unique methods to help close the gap between excluded groups and the scientific community. In Egypt, science is considered a luxury for the rich. People from underserved communities have economic pressure and familial expectations that drive their career choices. The Fun Lab is effectively a mobile science center with its own planetarium and an array of hands-on science activities. The science bus travels to remote areas that have limited access to schools and science resources. Its aim is to expose children to both practical and abstract science. But when I deliver the show, we can see the sparkle in their eyes. They adore science and they need to be reached. I'm pretty sure we're going to find next Einstein uh, from underprivileged areas. In India, both class structures and traditional gender roles block young women from higher education and the scientific community. The National Center for Biological Sciences partnered with an NGO called Care India to organize Zoom calls between young girls and female scientists. The aim is to expose both the girls and their entire communities to female role models that have built fruitful careers in science. You have to build those relations with, with the communities on the ground. You have to gain trust. You respect their culture and then you tell them, OK, now I've respected you. We have come with all these advantages. Let's do some science education and then they'll be OK with it. In Portugal, the remote region near the Spanish border suffers from simply too few people and fewer opportunities. The Open Science Hub Portugal seeks to bring science, innovation, and entrepreneurship to this community instead of the community leaving to find them. The Hub works as facilitators, matching and adapting projects to the needs of the region. You always have to put yourself in the shoes of others. Then seeing, okay, so now how, how should we adapt in a way that is meaningful by the end of the day for everyone? In Scotland, the Gorbals is an economically depressed district in Glasgow. Crime, poverty, and unemployment remain major barriers to science education and opportunities. The STEM in the Gorbals project started as a magazine for children's writing and it grew into an all-day event, which includes activities, podcasts, and experiments. The students and the volunteering professionals drive the content and activities. The program is almost entirely unfunded and relies on cooperation and volunteerism. It always had a really, really strong community spirit. And what you'll find is that see, no matter where you go, somebody will always try and help you. The last project is in England. Astronomy is thought of as a highly visual field of science, and there are few resources for visually impaired people with an interest in outer space. The Tactile Universe creates workshops that integrate into the standard primary school class period. The workshop uses 3D printed physical models of galaxies, which allow visually impaired students to feel the imagery of distant stars. Even though our models are targeted at vision impaired people, people with perfect vision get a whole lot out of them as well because it's a, it's a new way of 
thinking about something that they might already be familiar with. So you may start off designing something to work for a specific group of people, but in the long run, it's going to improve everything for everybody. Each of the programs deal with inclusive science engagement differently, but they reveal a few best practices that can help improve the connection between excluded groups and the scientific community. Exposure. Simply introducing people to the scientific world can have lasting influence on how they engage with science in the future. Building trust. True exchange is only possible if time and effort are invested into building real personal relationships. Understanding success. The parameters of success should be set by the community in focus, not prescribed from the outside. Be resourceful. The best way to achieve lasting change is to empower the people in the community to take part in the process. Inclusion helps everyone. Engagement with an excluded group can drive innovation beyond the original objective. Including new voices and perspectives into the scientific conversation is essential for opening new paths for discovery and development. When the scientific community and the whole public are openly engaged, it can create a prosperous and fair future for all.